music producers is Curtis King of CurtisKingBeats.com and you're watching another episode of Curtis oh. My Beats. This is the show where we listen to user submitted beats from the producers out there. Yes, you. Those producers that are on YouTube that are part of the community, you send your beats in, I'll give you my critiques, I will give you feedback, I'll give you suggestions, all of which are meant to help build up your empire and not burn down your building. Today, the first person that we are getting to I believe the producer's name is Crank Man on Deck. He says, hey, Curtis, my name is Crank Man on Deck. Thank you for taking the time out to listen to my beats. You are definitely a motivation and inspiration. Keep grinding, doing what you do. Thank you for submitting your beats. You left us with your YouTube link, Instagram link, and a SoundCloud link. Let's listen to the first beat, which is called Bando. Crank Man on Deck. Okay, Crank Man on Deck. Dope beat. I, I honestly enjoyed it. So let's talk about the sound selection first. Sound selection, I think you chose great instruments. You chose instruments that conveyed a message very clearly to the listener. As I listen to this, I'm hearing or expecting to hear somebody kind of tell an eerie storytelling uh, or make an eerie storytelling song. And so I think you conveyed that well. I gave that an eight. Your sound design, I gave an eight because I think that you went the extra mile and the special effects that you use with the lead instruments. I'm listening to the lead instruments. I'm listening to that. Boop, 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 boop. I'm listening to that. I'm listening to, you know, the reverb that you're adding to certain sounds within the melodic, the melodic sounds, not even just drums, but the melodic sounds. You really told a very accurate story. Arrangement, I give it a seven. Mixing, I enjoyed your mixing on this one. I give it an eight. The drums, I gave it a seven only because the drums, you know, it, there was nothing that stood out that was wrong with them. But for me, that snare is such a wide open snare that I can just hear it needing to be ducked down by the engineer when they get a rapper to rap over it. I feel like that's going to be a, an edit that's going to happen. Why not make the edit yourself? So I think that snare is is uh, kind of too loose. I would tighten the snare up or even take the snare down a little bit. Um, but I think it's just kind of wide open. It's, it's, it's a huge splash on there. Now for the melodic creativity, I give it an eight. Although the lead instrument was very consistent through it, I think that you added enough variables around it to make it still interesting I, I didn't think that it became too monotonous low end i give that a nine i think that was one of my favorite parts about this there was a very clean mix on that particular 808 now i definitely hear this as being something that would be great if you choose to leash your beats i think a lot of rappers would love the fact that this is wide open and the bigger picture, did it convey emo an emotion? I gave it an eight because I do feel like it conveyed an emotion. So very interesting beat. I really enjoyed it. This next one is called Get Up On It. You say it's a draft. I'm always scared when I see that, but let's listen to it anyways. EAbanks.com. Thank you. 
Okay. Yeah, that was the one, bro. That was definitely the one. So let's run down the line. Uh, so a note that I messed up from the last beat that I wanted to mention was that the lead instrument, and something I want to mention first, was the lead instrument was a bit too loud in comparison to the rest of the beat. But we can move on to this beat, which I really enjoy. Out of the two, this is my favorite. Sound selection, I give it a nine. You chose really great instruments. Sound design, I give it an eight because you took us through enough valleys and peaks and changes that justified every single transition. It's almost like you made every single loop count, which I think is great when you're talking about sound design. Arrangement, once again, you beat that over the head. You really, and sometimes sound design and arrangement can kind of go, they kind of overlap when you're talking about critiquing these things, but arrangement in terms of where you actually laid a lot of these instruments you're very masterful in these instruments that you that you uh, you put where you put them. Mixing, uh, the only thing that I had an actual critiquing of with this particular beat is that it, it definitely gives you the vibes. I enjoy the sample that you use in the background. Only thing I would have liked to see more was not thinning out the sample as much as you did. I think that there's a lot more soul, a lot more sounds within that. And maybe you're doing that because there's drums behind it, uh, the original sample, but I would have liked to hear it in its original integrity because I feel like that's when you start getting the vibes. Think about Drake's uh, new song, uh, uh, Nice For What. You're still getting sort of the integrity of the original sample and you're still filtering out the drums. I think there's a thin line to where you can start getting it to, to be too thin where it kind of loses a little bit of its essence and its soul. Drums, I, I really enjoy the drums on this one. I gave it an eight. Uh, the mixing, we talked about that. Melodic creativity, I gave it a nine. Low end, I gave it an eight. You're really great on your low end. Your basses are always on point, well, at least from these two beats I can hear. Placement, leasing, sync. I hear Drake all, all, all over this. I can hear a Tory Lanez. I can hear a Bryson Tiller. It just feels right within their lane. Bigger pitch, did it convey an emotion? Yes, hell yes, it did. So I gave that a nine. Thank you for sharing your production. So for those that want to connect on YouTube, his name is this is underscore crank. Instagram is once again at this is underscore C O D. And in SoundCloud, at soundcloud.com forward slash this is C O D. Thank you for submitting your beats, Crank the Crank Man on Deck. Excellent work, man. Continue to doing what you're doing. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so this one is sent from, I believe, a timeless. He says, Hi, my name is Manny Manuel. I go by the producer name Double M. Oh, you got three different names going through here. <laughs> my company name, ah, is Timeless Music. And attached are some of my beats that I am submitting for the VIP pass. Thank you for your time and hope to hear from you soon. Okay, sweet. So then you left us with your website, TM Music, and then you left us with two beats, Bag Up and Going Down. Let's listen to Bag Up.
right. So, Manuel. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go down the list. Uh, this one was called Bag Up. Sound selection, I gave it a six because the first thing that comes to mind is that I'm hearing a lot of stock sounds. I'm hearing sounds that don't sound like there was a lot of attention to detail in terms of the actual mixing, in terms of adding effects, in terms of adding reverb, giving more space so that eventually a rapper can come rap over this. I think as you start to move forward, you're going to want to pay more attention to the type of instruments you're picking because I think that melodically you had some great ideas here uh, that I think that with the right instruments, this could have been in a completely different beat. Higher quality instruments, this could have been a completely different beat. Sound design, I give it a six because I saw that you attempted to add, you know, the special effects and certain things that really build it up. I think that you made the effort, but the execution wasn't all the way there. The tag was too loud in the beginning. It's actually peeking through as I'm listening to it within these headphones. At 115, even though this had the stock sounds, it it felt like something special happened. And I'm just speaking from a listener right now, not even from the critiquing. I, something special happened where it felt like you stripped down some of those instruments and they exposed less of the stock sounds that you used. So I thought that was interesting in 115. You might want to revisit that. Arrangement, I give it a six because, you know, you did take things out. You brought things back in. So I at least show some attention to that. Mixing, I gave that another five because those sounds, although stock, there's still things that you can do to them to make them feel like they sit in the right place. Even when you're listening to like the demo songs and like the old FL Studios, when you first get your FL Studio and it comes with a demo song that shows you how to use it, even those sound mixed. They may be cheesy sounds, but they sound mixed. Drums, five, once again, because of the stock snares and kicks. Melodic creativity, I give it a six because at least you attempted to add other instruments and, and, and accompany sort of that, that very harsh horn that was the lead. And then you brought in some interesting things with the low end. However, because that low end was not coming through strong enough, I gave that a five. A placement, leasing, and sync, for this particular beat, not yet. I don't think any of those categories you want to push through. I think right now is the time to focus on developing your craft. I think it's time to really focus on getting higher quality sounds and investing into your craft because it's worth, worth it. You show great potential in that. Bigger picture, how well did it convey an emotion? It could go either way. At some points, it sounded like you could hear somebody aggressive over it. At some points, it sounded like maybe you could hear somebody more soulful of an artist over it, but it didn't clearly convey an emotion for me at least so i gave that another five for that category but have no fear man let's listen to going down Okay, double M. Let's talk about these categories. So some initial notes that I had was that when you took this particular beat to just the choir and the drums, I felt like that was where the majority of this beat should have been focused on. I feel like if you were to look at this beat from a very broad perspective and if you started with just the kicks on um, the kicks the drums and that choir and then added instruments one by one i don't think you would have added as many as you did because i think that there's a synthesizer that whoa, 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 that's 
so overpowering because it's not mixed correctly, uh, or at least it's not it's not complementary. Let me not say mixed correctly because everybody has their own style, but it's not complementary to the overall beat. Sound selection, I give it a six because once again, I think you're having the same issue with the stock sounds. Uh, the second category, sound design, I gave it a six uh, because I feel like this beat was better. And, you know, your sound selection actually sounded better. But once again, those stock sounds make it very difficult to pitch this for whatever category that you're interested in pitching it to, whether it's customers, artists, or sync license. There's arpeggios in the left that you panned that I think that if you had just the choir and the drums and then you brought that arpeggio sort of at the eight bar mark, uh, develop a mood play around with the arrangement some more i give that a seven because i feel like you arranged this one well i feel like you took instruments out and brought them in when you thought that they count except for that one lead instrument to me that's why i had to give the mixing a six because that was just way too prevalent within this particular beat uh, it was a sore thumb from a listener standpoint for me at least the drums i give it a six they're better drums but once again got to step up those drums got to find some higher quality drums that really bring through like you want your listener to be able to smell the wood off of your snare drums or your 808s or whatever the case may be melodic creativity i give this one a seven because you try different things melodically which at the end of the day i think is the most important is trying new things and seeing how they work for you low end i give it a six although this one was better mixed it's still not coming through and providing the warmness that the bass has to provide a beat placement leasing sync once again i say not yet i said possibly video games i could see this for but even then it feels like it would be for a video game that's like 10 or 15 years ago i think that those sounds are sounds that are from the same sort of lineage of those particular video games so bigger picture how well did it convey an emotion i feel like it conveyed contradictory emotions as i listen to it because when you hear the choir that's kind of giving you sort of a moody I want to hear a lyricist kind of just tell their story over it. But then you hear that, whoa, 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 whoa. And that just kind of says like, okay, you going to tell me a moody story in the club or what's going on? I think it's kind of contradictory to the overall message. But either way, Double M, let's share your information. So his website is TM or T Music, but spelled M-U-S-Z-I-K.com. Twitter is double M 46 Instagram.com forward slash timeless music soundcloud.com forward slash double M M four. Thank you for sharing your beats. Uh, it takes a lot to put yourself on the gauntlet. Let's go to the next producer. Brandon Ellison, you didn't leave us no information. You just said, listen to these beats, Curtis. Okay. I will, my friend. So the first one is called, I think it's four eyes, four eyes and then a sample. Let's listen to it. Brandon, I, I enjoyed that first beat. The beat's called Four Eyes Sample, I believe. <laughs> but sound selection, I gave it a six. I felt that you used instruments that really give me that boom bap or even that lo-fi type of feeling. And I think that you chose the right ones. I think my only issue overall with it is the way that you panned them and maybe even the way that you mixed them. Let's go down to category sound design. I gave it a six because with sample beats, you have a little bit of leeway in terms of sound design, even though they're not heavily uh, relying upon sound design, you could have done some more things. I think that you could have took the actual you could have took that through a low pass filter. You could have gated it, maybe using like an effect tricks or something that's really going to 
give the listener a feeling like, okay, this is just not a continuous loop. You're adding variations, maybe even pitching it down or taking it out, chopping up, you know, just giving some more variation, which brings us to the arrangement and that, you know, I, I like how straightforward it is. I think that there's a lot of rappers who may not like how simplistic it's just verse, chorus, verse, chorus. I think they like to have some unexpected times. So when I look at that, I'd say, if I were to look at both of those factors, I would give it a six. Mixing, I give that a six. I was kind of leaning towards five only because, uh, and I guess I could combine this with the drums, the kick and the bass were too loud. And also, that snare was panned too far right, right? I know you're probably trying to make space for the listener, but it seems like you might have the snare pan probably like to a like probably like a 15 and then the clap is probably sitting like at a 30 35 uh going to the right i'm thinking in terms of um the way i pan on fl studio and i think that you're losing sort of the 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 beauty of a snare within a sample beat the snare like it's got a snap and although the kicks even though the drums are loud they're not necessarily how can i put it banging they're not necessarily banging through they're just loud and I think that you need to scale that back. So I gave the mixing a six. I gave the drums a seven. The creative, uh, the sample chops, seven. I think you did really well with those. Matter of fact, I'll even change that to an eight. I enjoyed when you took it towards the chorus. Low end, I gave that a six only because I felt like even, even towards, especially towards the chorus, is when it started to kind of like take away from the vibe of the entire beat because you were doing you're trying to do more with it but because it wasn't mixed well it's overpowering all the other frequencies within the sample now in terms of placement lease or sync licensing i mean obviously sync is going to be more difficult because of the sample but i could see this being something that you may submit off for leasing not even submit off but you would basically make available on your website for leasing I could see rappers who would love to kind of evoke some of those old school hip hop vibes and rap over that. Bigger picture, did it convey an emotion? Of course it did. That's the beauty sometimes of sampling is that you get sort of an instant emotion to work with. And then those drums that come in definitely accentuate that. Although, like I said, those could be mixed a bit better. But that was the first one. Let's listen to the next one. I think it's called Wife or just W-I-F. Let's listen to it. you would have left the information brandon i know it's somebody out there that would love to have this beat let's go down the line for this beat wife or w with whatever you whatever you intended with that sound selection i give it a seven because you know i i i wish you would have done more with the actual drums i know that we're used to hearing drums over sample beats that are very minimal but i think that there's certain things that you could have added i would have loved to hear like some bongo rolls or something that would have just gave me a whole other feeling maybe even some shakers or just something that would have really evoked like like what is this person that is making this beat or not even a person making the beat somebody who's rapping over it, what are they going through like give us different elements show us some tension show us how the beat is evolving over time show us that this is a moving story and not just a very stagnant but it's powerful but a very stagnant story that's just kind of telling the same scene 
give us different scenes is what I'm asking. So I gave it seven sound design. I gave it a six because once again, I think that if you would have ran this through some low pass filters, high pass filters, maybe even have it to where the sample gets muted out, I think you would have more special moments within this arrangement. I give it a six because once again, it's a very straightforward sample beat mixing. I give it a seven and I enjoyed the mixing better on this one than the first one. The kick and the snare like that volume ratio on point. Only thing that stands out once again to me, we're going to skip a category because sample chops, I gave that a eight because you were very efficient with that. But the low end, man, you're going to have to really sit with your low ends. And I don't know how you're doing your low ends. I don't know if you're mixing really loudly or if you're mixing in headphones, but start to push these, these bass notes to a higher frequency. One, to see if they're in the right key because I saw some of the notes. I heard some of the notes that were out of key. And also, too, just the treatment that you're giving it towards the mixing. I don't feel like you're giving it an, as much treatment as you are your drums. I feel like you're just kind of like making the drums, putting this loop together and saying, oh, man, I got to put the bass in there. And you should not be afraid of the bass. Now, in terms of placement, least sync, I would say this is great for placement and, and um, for leasing. I think that you can definitely put this up and, and you better clear that sample, first of all, before I get sued. I think that it would work out for you, even if you're sitting it off for placement, because I think here's what a rapper would do. I think a rapper would take this sample and then uh, take your drum loops and then have another producer co-produce it and kind of beef it up and maybe add like some more live instrumentations. But this would definitely be a starting point. And in that position, you would be a beat maker contributing to a song. Bigger picture, how well did it convey an emotion? Did it convey an emotion? Heck yeah. And I think that's the beauty, once again, of sampling. Sampling gives you an instant emotion. Now, did your drums add something to that emotion? Absolutely. But that bass line, I think you should scale it back a little bit, find it, make sure it's in the right keys, because once you do that, once this comes through like very present, people are going to instantly fall in love with this beat and your craft. And so I went to the next email and actually Brandon did leave his information. Instagram is dude with dude with beats, dude, <laughs> W-I-T beats, SoundCloud, D-W-T-B-8-3. Next producer, last producer, Letterman Official. Hello, my name is Letterman Official. I've been producing for eight months and I'm 16 years old. My first beat is one I'm thinking of putting on my mixtape, Wave the Flame, which I think is a blend of R&B and hip hop. Breezy. My second beat is a trap beat that I really enjoy listening to myself. That is a different take on the genre. Bo. So the sound selection, I gave it a seven because although I can tell these are stock sounds and first of all, awesome work. You know, I know you're 16. I know you're eight months in. Awesome work. You know, you're showing that you're experimental, which is very important very early on for young producers. Be experimental. Try things. T take chances. Don't be afraid of messing up like you're not going to mess up literally if unless you try not to mess up. That's how you mess up. So sound selection, I gave it a seven because although these were stock sounds, you chose some nice stock sounds. Right. And and I think that that's important as you're starting to develop your sound that you still find the highest quality based upon what you have and not just settle for sound. Sound design, I gave it a five because although you took 
the, I guess what I'm assuming is the chorus through a low pass filter. It just wasn't enough sound design that I think that would keep the listener's attention. Right now, it's just kind of like a vibe that's just kind of continuously drowning on and it's not really taking you anywhere. It's just kind of like leaving you out there in the sky and then kind of just taking you out every once in a while. It's just not giving enough of that arrangement. I give it a seven because I feel like you did pay attention to the instruments that you added and took away. Mixing, I gave it a six because I feel like it was very safe in terms of where you were putting these drums at. It didn't feel like they were intentional. It felt like they were safe. Drums, you could have you could have done more, even with some hi hats, even uh, you know adding like some cymbals, just something that gives me more of a variety within the soundscape of uh, beats. Now, in terms of melodic creativity, I gave that a six because I think that you did try some things. I think that you even had that sort of live bass feeling that was complimentary to it. And I enjoyed that. Bass, I like the type of bass that you use, but I didn't like the way that you mixed it. So I gave that a six. Now, that one, I think, still has a sub presence. You're not looking for this beat to bang, but you do want the bass to be warm. And I feel like that would have came through had it been something that you actually took time to mix bass wise or just learn some things bass wise. Placement, lease or sync license. I see this as sync, honestly. I don't see an artist gravitating to this one immediately, but I do see somebody in an indie movie. I can see, see somebody contemplating like a breakup or contemplating whether to call somebody back. Like I, I can see it in a very vulnerable moment for somebody. How well did it convey an em emotion? It could have been either or. It was one of them kind of ambiguous beats that could be either or. It could be very sad or it could be slightly happy depending on how you view it. But that was my viewpoints on those. Let's listen to the second beat and get to those critiques. Right, my friend let him in official let's go down the list so in terms of overall with this particular beat i think that you're having uh some 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 difficulty still and it's probably because it's so early within your particular production career with these stock sounds this one you didn't make as wise choices as you did the first one in terms of the stock sounds that you chose and this beat sort of exposes that for me so i gave it a six for the sound selection the sound design, I gave it a five because although there were some change-ups within the drums, there were very subtle change-ups and not enough that I think would make this a winner for somebody who's listening to it. Arrangement-wise, I give it a six. The mixing, I actually uh, give that a, a six as well because I, I feel like it, it, it has the same difficulties the first one had in that because these are not all your sounds, and, and, and what I mean by that is that these are pre-made sounds in terms of the the instruments that you're choosing you don't have as much control that you probably would desire to have over them and that's going to come with time my friend so mixing i gave it a six drums i gave it a five because i just was not a fan of the drums i like the kick the kick was stumpy but then here's the thing about it when you pay attention to one particular sound like a kick Everything else has to be complementary to that or it's going to stand out like a sore thumb for no reason, right? So if you wanted to have this be something that was a beat that was driven by just your kick, then everything else has to be complementary to that. And I feel like that wasn't necessarily the 
the uh, the execution on that. Now for the low end, I gave that a seven because the bass did come through a little bit cleaner in terms of mixing. That's probably my favorite thing about this particular beat. So I gave that a seven. Placement lease and uh, leasing and sync licensing. I don't see it for any of those categories quite yet. And I'm going to just say not yet. I think you should focus more so on developing your craft, getting getting, getting your beats in, getting more failure. Keep failing, keep failing, keep failing, keep failing, keep failing, and then fail some more. Keep going. Continue to get better. How well did you convey an emotion? This one was another one where it was very ambiguous. Like it could have been any kind of emotion. And, you know, when rappers are looking to buy beats or you're trying to get placements, they're looking for a very deliberate, this is a sad beat, this is a happy beat, this is an angry beat, it's a hype beat, it's a lit beat, it's a turned down beat. Whatever the case may be, they're looking for a very very, very deliberate emotion. So those are my thoughts on that. Thank you for submitting your beats off. Now your Twitter and SoundCloud are at Letterman off, short for official. SoundCloud, you can see that right here. And he said, P.S. Congratulations to your new baby. And I really enjoy your book. Thank you for reading my book, man. I'm glad that you found value within the book. And I think that you'll continue to find value the more that you're progressing on. You know, great work. For being eight months in there's no school for this so great work for what you're doing but music producers thank you for watching another episode of critique my oh. beats now if you would like to be on a future episode you're gonna have to sign up for a vip pass at critique we'll get back to you 12 to 24 hours we'll give you a payment link and then you will be set up for a future episode of critique my beats <laughs> once again this is curtis king and curtis king have a good one